Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Very glad to have all of you here with us. Special welcome to guests and visitors who might be with us today, and welcome as well to those who are joining us online. Just a few brief announcements as we begin our worship with one another. Just a reminder, and next Sunday we have our intergenerational Bible study between services. Look forward to having you join us for that amazing time of intergenerational fellowship and learning centered in on God's Word. Also, this upcoming Thursday, 6.30, we have a Trail Life meeting. Trail Life is a scouting-like organization that is getting kicked off here in the fall. If you're looking for more information, you can talk to myself after the service, or Josh, he's the guy with the big beard in the back. He can probably even give you better information. Um, Again, that's Thursday at 6.30. Just wanted to update everyone. We had our voters meeting recently, and we have voted to move forward with the capital campaign as well as doing more detailed drawings and architectural renderings so kind of two paths that are moving forward that passed overwhelmingly you're going to hear a lot more about this program in the next many months and we ask you to be in prayer for that it's a big step for our life together in worship and in life and in ministry and we're very excited to see where god leads that for us That being said, let's begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. rise. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. We pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus, as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson for today comes from Exodus, the 16th chapter, beginning with the second verse. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening... Quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson appointed for today comes from Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Therefore, I, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humanity and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body... And one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of God, Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we attain the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the sure stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, 
tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then he said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered him, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they went and said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And he said to them, Sir, Give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. By the congregation to be seen, and for our children, please come forward at this time. Careful. You're all right up there? Or do you want to sit down by your brother? Okay, let me help you. There you go. Okay, sit down. All right. How is everybody? You doing good? Anybody hungry? Yeah, sometimes on Sunday mornings, when especially when we come to this early service, we sometimes don't get a lot to eat. And so we come um, hungry. It, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? Um, candy. candy. <laughs> That's a new food group. Okay. Can you help me out? 
over there, right? Just make sure when he gets back, you reach into that purse in that pocket. Let's have some food, right? What, what do you, huh? Grapes. Grapes, you like fruit? Mac and cheese. Let's talk about mac and cheese. Who makes the best mac and cheese? Your mom. <laughs> yeah, mom's mac and cheese is pretty amazing. Um, my food that my mom used to make was a sheet cake, so it's not too far from candy, right? So, um, and it's not one that hardly anyone else makes just like her. So, um, anytime anybody gets close, I'm thinking, oh, right, I think of my mom. And mac and cheese or any of those other things, it tastes the best because mom made it or someone that loves you makes it right so whatever food that is or whoever gives you that if it's done with love then that is the best it makes everything taste better when people were following Jesus they ate and ate and ate out of five loaves and two fish and everybody had as much as they could want to eat but you know what happened the next day they got hungry again and so they went to Jesus, not because of the love that he did, but because they were hungry. And that's no reason to, um, to follow Jesus, right? Is because of the food that he gives? Why do we follow Jesus? We go to Jesus, or we come to church. Because he right, so because he forgives our sins, right? And that is... That is the greatest thing for us today. To know even as our, as our stomachs might be growling and trying at, to say, hey, pay attention to me, I need food. Our hearts do that too. That our hearts, what we need the most is Jesus. So I'm so thankful that you guys are all here today to hear about Jesus, not to get a handout not to get food, not to get candy, and not to get chocolate cake, but to give the love of Jesus that he gives to you. And that is the best thing. That is what we need the most, to be able to share that and to know of Jesus' love for us. Okay? Better than mac and cheese from our mom. Even, even though that's really good, better than anything else, Jesus is the best. And that's why we come to him. So let's, let's go to him. Let's pray, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, today for your son, Jesus, who came down from heaven, who supplies our, our every need. Uh, Lord, that it would fill us to overflowing with the love and the patience and the kindness and the forgiveness that comes from your hand. So Lord, um, bless us, fill us, go before us as we worship you this morning. And all God's people said, amen. All right, see you later. Good luck on the candy and the mac and cheese. God's grace and his peace is ours only through Christ Jesus our Lord who comes before us today 
who provides us with heavenly food, manna that has come down from heaven, the word of God, as it pours over our lives, as it is, uh, becomes part of, of who we are, as he strengthens us for daily living. Uh, we will, in the next, next three weeks, today and then two more uh, weeks, we'll be looking at Jesus, the bread of life. A number of verses, we only had um, one section of that, and uh, we'll talk about what Jesus is doing as people are following him today. Uh, next week, really, Jesus looks to the cross, and he, he gives life to the world, uh, certainly through his death and through his resurrection. And then finally, in that third week, uh, we really do look at uh, the Lord's Supper and the sustenance and the strength and the life and the forgiveness that comes uh, by his sacrifice and his resurrection. Today we come, we're all searching for something, candy, mac and cheese, chocolate cake, but we come for peace and comfort, for understanding, for answers, for hope, for truth. for healing, whatever that we come for today, whatever it is that you need, that you think you need, God promises to provide, that he is the bread from heaven, he is what you need most of all. There are always those pieces, well, I, 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 and Jesus says, I am. I am what you need, that we would desire to be filled to overflowing with what God's word promises to provide for us today. As Jesus addresses the crowds, those who had come across the sea, those who followed him, he spoke these two words, simple and plain they angered his enemies, I am, and they gave joy to those who believed in him. When Moses was on the top of Mount Sinai, and he said, I choose you to lead my people. You will go to Pharaoh to let my people go. Yeah, I don't think I'm the guy. I don't even know what your name is. What do I say to them when they say, what's this God's name? And God bellows out, I am. And every time that God says, through Jesus, I am, there is a clear statement that Jesus proclaims that he is God. Not only the Father is God, but the Son is God and the Holy Spirit is God. And each time he says, I am, it strikes fear in the enemies of God. Usually when we say, I am, I am tired, I am angry, I am lonely, I am confused, I am lost, I am afraid. I'm out of time, I'm out of money, and I'm out of patience. But when God says, I am, he clearly states that every need comes from his hand. Seven times in the book of John, Jesus is recorded saying, I am. I am the good shepherd, I am the door, I am the true vine. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the light. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And today we hear him say, I am the bread of life. Already in the book of John, Jesus has performed many miracles. Before we get to Capernaum, this side of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus fed them on the other side with five loaves and two fish. Fed 5,000 men 
plus children plus their wives. It was a fantastic miracle, and there was so much food, so much left over, that they gathered 12 baskets. Jesus walks on water. He calms the storm. And that's just a handful of the miracles that we see Jesus perform. And we see in John chapter 20, almost at the end of John, after all of the miracles, after all the healings, after all the provision, he speaks these words, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. So many other miracles, so many other proofs that he is God. And he goes on to say, but everything that is written is written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that by believing in his name, you might have that, that salvation that comes only through him. So a lot of questions today by those who uh, get up, they've had their full the night before, they get up and they look around, and Jesus is nowhere to be found. They saw his disciples go away in a boat alone, but then they went chasing their stomachs. They were empty again. They were ready to be filled, and there were so many questions. And so they find Jesus, and they ask the question, when did you get here? Or maybe, how did you get here? Because you didn't come by boat. And Jesus says, I've been here all along. Where have you been? And we say for those, as we question today, we have plenty of questions in our lives. Plenty in our minds, plenty in our hearts, those difficulties, those uh, shortcomings. We say, oh Jesus, when did you get here? How did you get here? And Jesus says to us today, I've been here all along. I have never left you. You just see me in a different light today as I feed you because I am the bread of life. They said, okay, well, I'm not sure how you got here, but when do we eat? That really is the big question. We have come a long way and we need something to eat. We ate yesterday but we're hungry again. And Jesus saw their desire for a physical feeling, filling, but not for that spiritual food which he has come to deliver. You see, they see Jesus almost as a vending machine. I was going to talk to the kids about a vending machine. They have no idea, right? But for us, as we've been through that, a1, D2, you know, whatever your favorite flavor, to deliver candy or a Pop-Tart or a bag of chips or to, for us old timers, pull out a bottle of pop. You can't do that anymore. But they're treating Jesus almost like a vending machine. Because of what you did for me then, I want you to do it again now. I want to be able to choose. I want to say what I need and what will satisfy. And Jesus sees through all of that as they ask their question. Well, what must we do? And that's a question that we ask even today. Yes, Jesus, you are the bread of life. Yes, you are the Savior of the world. But how do we get that? What must we do? What must we think? What must we put our hands to? Where must we go? How do I treat those around me? How do I lead my children and my grandchildren? Somehow, it's twisted just enough. And the twisting of the gospel, even a little, is no gospel at all. 
And we ask, what must we do? We must have a part in it. We must have to do something because that's the way life works. But Jesus says, I have done it all. Even the work you do, that's the work I give you to do. But I have done it all. And there is, okay, all of these questions and there are answers, and he speaks kind of underneath it all for what they really need, right? He's not delivering what they came for, but he delivers and provides what they need because he knows, just as he knows what you need today. Strength and life and hope and healing and forgiveness. No matter what you think you need, Jesus delivers exactly what you need. And so the final question is, okay, that's all good and fine, so if you're not going to feed us, what are you going to do now? What have you done for me lately? We've seen you perform these miracles, and these miracles, many miracles that are not recorded in the book of John, that you might believe. They were not believing in the Christ. They came for mac and cheese. They came for candy. They came for cake. Those things that fill an empty hole, but they do not satisfy. As we come to hear God's word, as we come to taste of his body and blood, it fills in a way as God's word pours over us, it fills us in a way that does satisfy. Plenty of questions. Plenty of signs and wonders. But even those who have come now to be filled and are filled with good things that Jesus provides, what signs will you provide? For our forefathers, those who came before us, they ate the manna that came down from heaven. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp as recorded in Exodus 16. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know how it worked. But also, we kind of think about manna and bread from heaven. It's not like somebody throwing loaves of bread and just picking them up. It's dew that dries. If you've ever wanted to mow your lawn, because your day's been busy, but you go out and your, your socks are wet because the grass and the dew in the grass is so heavy, you have to wait. And you wait for the wind to blow. And in God's good timing, that dries up. Same thing with the dew in the morning and manna the bread from heaven, and it dries. And it says, when the dew is gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. I just had to throw that in. Thin flakes like frost, frosted flakes. It's, uh, it's the dad in me. Manna. Again, they'd never seen it. They didn't know what it was, but they ate it every day. It was there every day, as is God and his word and his promise for us. Every day is a new day. Every day, God supplies again. So much that God supplies that we often take it for granted. God gave us a heartbeat today, and he gives us air to breathe. He gives us a place to stay. He gives us transportation. There is safety, and there is gatherings like this. This is God's blessing. This is part of the manna that comes from heaven. Not everyone has what we have, and so we give thanks as God supplies it again 
today. Not so much that we gather it and store it up and we think, oh, well, we've got enough for the next week or the next month or the next year. That's not how manna works. It's every day. Don't gather more than you need because I provide enough for the day. And I promise that as you gather today, you don't have to worry about tomorrow because I've created tomorrow as well. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the trespasses are many. And the people that went to Jesus on the shore that day looking for a physical filling, their trespasses were many. What signs? What wonders? Give us this daily bread. And they grumble and complain like their forefathers. Not again. Bread again. Quail again. The same thing day after day after day after day. And we grumble and complain. Thinking that God has not filled us or satisfied us like we desire. Sounds foolish. And it is. As we trust in God to supply our every need. And still we grumble and we complain. I think the important thing to remember here is the trespasses are many and so is the grumbling and the complaining and we all do it. But to remember that as we grumble and complain against macaroni and cheese, why do we have to have this day after day after day? We grumble and complain against God. Grumbling and complaining feels good at the time, right? But it doesn't satisfy. It doesn't fix that which really is underlying. As we grumble and complain, we do so against God. It's His fault that our lives are difficult and unfulfilled. It's His fault as we grumble and complain that we're tired and angry and unsatisfied. And you know that nothing could be farther from the truth. Because the bread that comes down from heaven gives life to the world. He is our world. He is the life of the world. By his death and resurrection. By his words that proclaim that you are sons and daughters the king. His word that proclaims, I forgive you. I provide for you. I know what you're going through. May God give us that reality that we might see it clearly. That his word is real food. And it is what our hearts long for. When you think, this or this or this or this it's not because we just the more we get the more we grumble and complain the more we long for something else that satisfies it is life in Christ that satisfies it is life in Christ where that belief becomes part of our daily life Wonder, after all, when we go days without God's word, when we go weeks without worshiping in a community of believers like this, you wonder why we think, man, I'm missing something. We become spiritually hangry. And Jesus feeds you with his truth. He feeds you with this life. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. 
I am. I am God. I am what you need. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. What is the work of God? What is the work that God requires? Jesus said, just believe. And even that work to belief is not our own doing. It's the work of the Spirit. Just as the wind blows across the dew and leaves a man behind, the Spirit of God blows heavily upon us today, upon our lives, upon the hardships, upon the difficulty, upon our lack of patience and endurance. And God says, I will provide. I will give you what you need. I promise. Not everything will turn out like you think it should. Not everything will be healed this side of heaven. Not everything will be restored this side of heaven. No matter what we think, no matter how we pray, no matter how we grumble and complain, no matter how tired we get, God says, I will provide. I am what you need. I'm with you today. I am what you need to believe in his name by the power of the Holy Spirit. I am the bread of life. I am, I am, I am. And you are mine. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Having heard God's word, let's stand together as we profess the words of the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, he of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate who suffered and was buried Who spoke by the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I adopt the one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead. I can go to the God. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all of those according to their needs. Father, we confess that we have pursued daily bread at the expense of the true bread of heaven, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Give to us all things needful for this body and life, but most of all, give the bread that nourishes within us eternal life and the drink that satisfies our thirst forever. Lord, in your mercy. Father, our world is filled with fear violence, and oppression. Bless our President, Congress, and all elected and appointed officials at every level of the government. They may act with integrity and justice, fulfilling the duties of the offices entrusted to them. 
Bring peace to the nations and freedom to those oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. Father, within our society, within our communities and neighborhoods, there are those that live within the shadows. The poor, the broken, the outcast, the homeless. Help us, Lord, to not only see these individuals known by name by you, but also see them with the love of Jesus, reaching out with your love, with your compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Mm -hmm. Father, your mercies are new every morning, yet we do not consistently acknowledge or give thanks for your loving care. Build in us grateful hearts to receive and use your gifts responsibly and for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we lift up all of the expectant moms in our midst at this time. For Laura and Melissa, for Emma and Brenda, for Kelly and Christy. Lord, keep not only them safe, but the child that is within. We give thanks for Clara and Darius as they welcomed Brindley just a few days ago. Bless them as they welcome this child and as we prepare to welcome Brindley as part of your family of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for making Hans Kruger your child through the waters of baptism. Strengthen those who love him to guide him so that he grows in faith and love for you. Lord, in your mercy. Father, as we know your love and compassion for those in need, so we pray you to be with the sick and the suffering, the grieving and the dying. Lord, according to your gracious will, grant them peace and comfort in their afflictions and healing and relief of their burden and pain. Lord, in your mercy. Father, give us your Holy Spirit that we who come to your table may receive with faith the gifts of forgiveness, life and salvation in the bread, which is Christ's body, and the cup, which is Christ's blood. Sustain us in this faith until the day when the church on earth and the church in heaven shall be in one communion in your presence for all eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your promises. Amen. By the congregation to be seated as our worship continues to the collection of our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Again, a special welcome to any guests and visitors who might be with us today. In your pews, you will have a, there's a small card. It's, we call it our Connect card. Feel free, if it's been a while since you've let us know that you're around, to fill that out with your information. One of us, Pastor Snow or myself, will be in touch with you. Welcome in the name of Christ. It is such a joy having you here today.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
And now may this, the true body and the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. We pray. Blessed Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you have fed and nourished us with the bread which is your body and the cup which is your blood. By this holy communion, strengthen us in faith and equip us for your service, that we may honor you with all that we are and offer you all the best for your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We go now with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.